Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mundane. This video is part of my hardware series, and today we're gonna be going over the differences of the Super Nintendo. I remember when the Super Nintendo came out. It was when I was in middle school, and it was, uh, it was just like a magical time. People were absolutely floored by the way that Super Mario World looked. You know, the kids that were lucky enough to get one got one, and they were the talk of the town. They were the ones that were hosting all of the sleepover parties where parents had to limit the number of kids that were going to do a sleepover. It was, it was ridiculous. Everyone absolutely wanted to play the Super Nintendo. Honestly, I didn't really get to play one until they started doing the college tours and stuff. And they showed up to one of my local colleges to just show off the system. That was a really great weekend for me as uh, my dad was at the college doing other things. And I knew the college well enough to be able to be left to my own devices. I chose to play on the Super Nintendo as much as possible that week. It was great. Uh, the people there were great. Whoever was running that event back in the day, they were super, super fun. Did not have any problems with me running around and playing video games there at such a young age. However, there are several, several hardware differences between the different types of the Super Nintendo. There were different revisions of this motherboard. That's the main part of it. These revisions were made over the course of the Super Nintendo's production run to address various issues, improve performance, and mainly to reduce cost. Now, everyone can tell the difference between the SNES and the SNES Junior, or at least that's what people have named it. It's just because there's two very obvious body types. But under the hood, there are actually a couple of really important revisions. The first revision of the SNES motherboard is known as the One Chip, or the One C board. It was the original design that featured the highest level of compatibility and performance. This motherboard features a single chip that housed the CPU and the PPU. The second is known as the Two Chip, or the Two C board. This was introduced to lower production cost in most co in most times. Uh, this motherboard features two separate chips for the CPU and the PPU. The third revision is known as the three chip or the three C board. This was an even cheaper version of the two C board. This revision was used in the last stage of production that also featured a single clock crystal to lower the cost. It's definitely worth noting that these revisions of the board were not exclusive to any specific region. It's possible to find them in different parts of the world and that they don't affect gameplay experience. The main difference is manufacturing cost. There is another slight difference where some of these revisions will have different video output capabilities. Uh, the, the main part, the anything with the SNES Junior body does not have S-Video capabilities. So there are modifications and amplifiers and restorers and stuff that are sold aftermarket that are fairly easy to install that allow you to upgrade the signal capability on the SNES. You can even get it all the way up to RGB and even component. Uh, it does take a little bit of work to get that done, but honestly, it's not that bad. On to the rest of the system. The power brick is a 10 volt DC 850 milliamp minimum with a positive outer tip. The controller honestly became almost an industry standard overnight. It's got a wonderful D-pad, four face buttons, a start and select, and two shoulder buttons. 
This made it vastly superior in the 16-bit era for fighting games. Playing Super Street Fighter on the SNES was, well, pretty much superior because of the controller. The controller was actually so superior that there was an adapter for the 3DO to play Super Nintendo controllers on your 3DO. But with every success, there's always a little bit of failure. And that's where the Super Scope 6 comes in. This beast required six double A's. Now, I'll admit it was a wonderful piece of tech. I absolutely loved it, but it just did not get a lot of support. I think there were only two games really released for it. And you know, if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments below. Now, speaking of shortcomings, the region lockout, the only region lockout for the Super Nintendo versus the Super Famicom was plastic. The carts had a different cutout and you can see how there was some little bit of plastic that were placed strategically to keep you from importing games. Honestly, this can be easily resolved if you remove the tabs from the system. Just go in there with some pliers or some flush cuts or something and just snip it out and then sand it smooth. That way you're not risking scuffing up any of your cartridges. It's a really easy mod, a lot of people do it, and yes, while it is physically damaging the system, it's not really any of the parts that you look at. So what I've helped, or at least what I've hoped helped you do is not be afraid of picking up a Super Nintendo. You need a controller. You need to figure out, do you want the one chip, the two chip, the three chip, or the SNES Junior to simplify things? Uh, and then, you know, what upgrades do you want to put with it? Do you want RGB? Do you want to have S-Video? Do you want to leave it stock? Also, do you want to get in there and do the region free mods to it? Um, you can you can do almost anything with the Super Nintendo within limitations, but I mean, I think it's a great and wonderful system. It's probably one of my top five. And anyone who's scared of collecting for it because they just don't know how to get into it, don't be. It's fairly simple, it's fairly straightforward. You need the system, the controller, the power, and the video cables. Once you have all of that, you can kind of like figure everything else as you go. What games to pick up? Do you pick up an EverDrive or not? You know, do you modify the video output or anything? All I'm asking you to do is to give it a chance. It's not really that scary to dive deep into like some of the other systems that have much more involved pieces. This thing is fairly straightforward and I really hope that you give it a shot and just go out there and just try. I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal. But again, I'm hoping to hear down in the comments below whether or not you've picked up the Super Nintendo because of my video or if I've helped you in any way. Thanks. And that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and I look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.